Hi, everybody. Russ and my Hammers 11. Hope you're safe and well. If new channel, please consider subscribing. Hitting the bell icon so you may have any time we put new content on. As always, we'd like to thank our channel sponsors, Untuck It. Check them out in the description below. I'm busting out an Untuck It shirt today. Designed to be untucked, which is my type of style. Um, obviously, we've got a new series starting today We're called um, My Hammers Greats where we take a different player each episode and do a bit of a player profile of them. Um, we have some video highlights. We talk about them in terms of their stats and things like that. Um, we have some questions. We have like a, a bit of a panel discussion. And also we have uh, their memories from you guys. So please make sure in the comments in the chat, you give us all your Steve Potts memories. Obviously, we're doing Steve Potts today as well. All your Steve Potts memories. And uh, and that'll be fantastic. And uh, that's what we're doing today. So it should be quite fun. I'm looking forward to it. Um, we've got a couple of guests. So we're going to have uh, Martin Godleyman, um, who is the voice of Upton Park and London Stadium, London Stadium, and then previously Upton Park. Um, I'm going to bring Martin in now quickly. How are we doing, Mr. Godleyman? How are we? Doing very well. Doing very well. Um, at the moment, it just with an eye on the US election, that, as you might imagine, which is the story of the moment. Uh, and that's why I'm wearing my New York City West Ham shirt. Oh, there we go. Um, very, very good. <laughs> So, yeah, so we've got Martin. Martin's going to be joining us each episode. <laughs> each episode, Martin's going to be joining us. And then we're going to have a, a guest panellist. That's probably the best way to describe it. And um, great. Today we've got Sam Delaney. I'm just going to bring Sam in. How are we doing, Sam? I'm all right, Russ. Pleasure How are you? To be here. Yeah, I'm good. Thanks, mate. Very good. Yeah, I'm keeping half an eye on that election as well. Um, <laughs> funnily enough. But I, I won't, actually. I'll try and switch off from it because it'll drive you, it dri <laughs> drives you crazy. You suddenly start paying like weird attention to like some obscure county in Pennsylvania yeah. that you've never heard of before. Exactly. And it's it's not it's not good for your mental health. No. You're better off talking about Steve Potts, aren't you? Exactly. Exactly. And that's what we're doing. There's mm. fireworks outside. There'll be fireworks here today with our mm. with our wit and our discussion. Um and yeah, apologies if you, if it sounds like I'm in the war zone or I'm in the garage. And I think <laughs> our next door neighbours decided to start a fireworks display at five minutes past nine, which is fantastic. Um, as always, as I said, make sure you got your comments and stuff. And obviously, you know, we'll do a bit of a do a bit of football chat. Obviously, you got Fulham on Saturday. What yeah. do you think? What do you think? Uh, well, <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm confident, obviously, because you know everyone I think agrees we've been playing in a really positive, encouraging way. But yeah. of course, you know, almost been feeling so positive off the back of performances that you forget we haven't won a game in what that's three games we drew to then lost one we're 14th in the table you Such know a West Ham fan the only, oh, no. only a West Ham fan could look at this current situation which is one of the best starts we've had to a season if you look at the fact that we played teams all up the top uh you could only get bad out of that. Fulham have won a game, right? Okay, mm -hmm. so now they don't have to think, right, we're now going to win. But, you know, maybe West Ham will give them one. So I, I think <laughs> be positive. Be positive. Be positive. Yeah, I mean, I feel positive. The, the only thing is, is that we've, you know, every team we've played so far, we've been able to play on the counter-attack, which yeah, is obviously right, what yeah. we're set up to do, you Good know. Point. And 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 so it would be just interesting to see if Moyes has a different approach for when we play a team who are going to be sitting back and looking to hit us on the counter attack. Mm. I, you know, so hopefully we'll have a plan B for that. Well, I think you know, I think the idea is to go out, you know, hard at the beginning, so to speak. You know, go out, you know, stay. He's, he's going to play his formation, get the early goal, then he can do the sit back and just let mm. Fulham come to us and just hit. Yeah. I'm looking forward ball, to it. You think if you put the ball in the centre spot? Both teams would just stay there and it would just... Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's interesting if both teams, yeah, want to sit back. I've never seen it done, but it would be a fascinating <laughs> tactical in encounter, wouldn't it? <laughs> exactly. And obviously, and obviously, it's obviously we had the announcement today about the Premier League looking to scrap the pay-per-view um, thing after the internationals. And obviously, Saturday is a pay-per-view game, isn't it? Um, for those of you who, who don't want to pay the, the money, please consider donating to the Iron Supporting Food Banks group. There Sorry. we go. Um, Justgiving.com crowdfunding, Iron Supporting Food Bank. Obviously, we re raised just over £20,000 in September for them. And uh, uh, because of all the P no no PPV, all that hashtag, they've got um, starting to get a bit more milk money coming in. So, um, and right. if I say Northwest Hammers, um, John Matomsky will, will donate £10. So, there we go. We've already made a tenner. Hammers. 
Does he do it if I say it as well? Yeah, 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 probably. Good old John. Right. Anyway, so as you, today we are covering Mr. Steve Potts. He's he's the our player profile. Think of it as you will. Um, so this is your life. This is your life, Steve Potts. And as I said, please um, put in the comments any memories of Steve Potts um, of his playing days, maybe times you've met him, things like that. So um, we're gonna have a little bit of a video. We're gonna have a bit of a discussion, and obviously open up to some some comments from from you guys. Um, I believe Mr. Potts may well be watching today as well. Um, in that, well, if he's not, it's going to be very embarrassing because because we've That's had some of his pressure on. Well, some of his schoolmates have have um have messaged me, and um, I've got some old school photos of Mister Potts, which is <laughs> which is going to be quite funny. I tell you what, let's show them now before we talk about the the man himself. So, um, let me just bring them up. So, um, by all accounts, when Steve was um was at school, he was a fantastic sportsman and very very um very one of those really annoying people who are just good at all sport do you know what i mean you just can pick up and just all the sports and yeah. the age of about four um i was being told he uh he started being very good at sport um he was and i've got my notes here he was part of the cricket team that won that got to the all london cricket cup final obviously oh, didn't I mean. win it because that's what they said um and and ironically given his 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 relative stature um he was part of the national champ uh, basketball champions school champions team so there we go. So a bit of basketball. Not good at. Well, I don't know. Well, I've got here. I've got a picture of him in uh, his rugby days. Um, that's so. That's the. Um, I think it's the Maversbrook Dagenham School, nineteen eighty one. I think third year rugby. And um, for those you can't see, Steve he's on the front row. There he is. Um, a, a tenacious scrum half, I've been told. Um, and so uh, yeah. Get, and what's quite funny, looking back at this video again, uh, like his picture rather. Two of the blokes ain't got no shoes on. The front two. Uh, you've got the guy next to Steve hasn't got no shoes, and the guy at the end, bless him, haven't got yeah. no shoes. But uh... Steve, Steve is the tallest person in that photograph. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit like me. He's he a is, late yeah. Bl- yeah. Oh, bless him. So, uh, so the, the man is already already a gifted sportsman before he even started playing football properly for West Ham. Um, Martin, do you want me to show you the little video first, or do you want to do yes, a little? Please. Um, let's. Um, let's... While, while we show, perhaps I could give people a few things to be thinking about while we show the uh, the, the little bit of uh, the history yeah. of Steve. Uh, and that is, can you think of another West Ham captain whose first name was Steve? And if you can get that, can you tell me how much taller he is than Steve? In inches, okay, seeing as we're leaving Europe at December. Just sort of give him something to do while the, you know, the stuff's rolling. Okie dokie. All right, thank you. I think someone's already come up with it, but it doesn't matter. Right, okay. Let's uh, let's show the let's show the video. Let's uh, let's share my screen, and we can share the video. <laughs> Steve Potts is another career hammer who will always be associated with the club. Born in Connecticut, USA in 1967, he nevertheless came to England and made his mark at West Ham United, making his debut on New Year's Day 1985. Potts started out as an orthodox right back before being moved into the center of defense. He immediately made an impact on the schoolboy international scene appearing for England at schoolboy and youth levels, gaining 11 caps. Potts captained the club at every level and has proved himself over the years with exquisitely timed tackles, always compensating for his lack of height with his composure on the ball and a calmness that always communicated itself to the players around him. Potts's determination and courage was never more clearly shown than during this Leeds game. Harry Redknapp's first in charge of West Ham back in August 1994. Steve Potts uh, looked quite seriously injured. Could you tell us a bit about that? Yeah, he's had seven stitches in his eye and he's also broken his nose. So uh, it was a bad knock. Um, I think, you know, Potts is so good looking, it might just bring him down to the level of one or two others. You know? One of the long running jokes in Potts' career was the fact that in 506 appearances, he only ever scored one goal. And here it is in all its glory, against Hull City, along with another opportunity he had to score in the same game. Bishop, that in his stride, cuts out from the right. 
plenty of chances from there, Steve Putz. It's a swerving shot and a great save. Fox may have thought he had his first goal in senior football. Now, here's Potts again. Tries from distance, has got a deflection, and the keeper couldn't keep it out. And Steve Potts finally has a goal for West Ham. It's his 88th game, and he scored. Steve Potts managed 17 seasons at the club, clocking up 506 first-team appearances the seventh highest for any player at the Berlin. Although Steve only scored one goal, he contributed to many others. Here are just a few Steve Potts assists from his years at West Ham. Richard Allen getting the header in there. Paris, will that goal lift the hammers? Slater to Potts, and that's a good ball to George Paris again. Paris has got past Northern, Paris scores! A brilliant goal by Paris. Two goals in two minutes has set Upton Park alight. That's his first of the season. Potts did well to get it across. Morning with a shot. Oh, a glorious volley. A beautiful cross by Steve Potts. It's West Ham United 3, Leicester City, nil. Good ball from Key to Potts. Watson. What a bad cross from Potts. What a goal by Morley. A fabulous cross from Steve Potts, which Morley met on the full. The great goal for West Ham. And look at this. Superb curling cross from Potts that made the job easy for Morley. Some waving at it. Potts out on the left. The ball into Morley. Fits well to Hutchison. And Hammers have two. How vital a goal that may well be. We shall see. But uh, well worked goal from West Ham. Steve Potts picked the ball out. And he saw Morley was short. And it was the neat touch from Potts with Morley. Laid it beautifully off for Hutchison, who hits a second for West Ham. James had no chance. And just before the hour, West Ham have a comfortable lead. It's West Ham 2, Liverpool 0. And finally, an assist that Steve Potts just might want to forget. Benison steers it forward. He's looking for Maffey. Now Cole. Now Cole, he's still through. Can get across, and it's an own goal. It's Steve Potts. And that was the brilliant work of Cole. And Newcastle are in front. Potts was not the most garrulous of men, but he did manage a few interviews during his career and gave his opinions in this rare interview about playing under the floodlights at Upton Park. I don't know what it is. Um, it just seems a totally different atmosphere, really, of an evening. Um, just seems to get all the players going. Uh, I don't know what it is. You know, if we could do that on a Saturday every time, we wouldn't, wouldn't have any problems. But um, I don't know. I don't know what it is. Potts was made club captain by Harry Redknapp when the vacancy came after Julian Dix's departure to Liverpool. Two seasons before, Potts had been ever-present in Billy Bond's side that won promotion to the Premiership in 1992-93. And his professionalism, determination and flair at the back made him an unchallenged contender and popular winner of that season's Hammer of the Year award, an accolade he was to win again two years later. The following season, 1995 to 96, during a televised match on a Monday night, Steve Potts received the only red card of his career as Newcastle romped to a 3-0 victory. And the attention the referee's decision that night received demonstrated the fact that it wasn't just West Ham fans who had admiration and respect for the unfortunate defender. Potts remained a squad player at Upton Park 
until the arrival of Glenn Roder, and at the end of the 2000 to 2001 season, no longer part of the manager's plans, Potts left the club to join local side Dagenham and Redbridge. There we go. Right, let me just unmute everybody. Sorry, I had to mute you all because otherwise it wouldn't have worked. Otherwise, um, so that was that was Steve Potts. God bless him. What a, what a great little a video there, Mark. Mistakes as well. Uh, it was the two thousand and one to two season was his last season. Uh, shocking. Except he didn't play in it, but that doesn't mean he wasn't there. Glen Roder managed okay. to not play him in yeah. a single game. Although at the time we thought he had four hundred ninety nine games and. I'm told that Glenn Roden knew that. Sorry if you're watching, Glenn. Uh, and couldn't find a couple of substitutions for him to get to, or just one to get to 500. Although we later mm. found six games in the Anglo-Italian Cup and one in the full Members Cup, which knocked it up to 506. Because it's a question of whether or not they're counted as full uh, thingy bob uh, numbers, and they were in the end, yeah. thank God. Mm. Can you imagine finishing on... Four ninety nine. Tough in it. Be tough in it. Incredible. <laughs> it was that. What your memory? What are your memories of uh, of of Steve Sam for, from your days? Um, well, just for, he was he was so composed, wasn't he, Steve Potts? He was a really classy player. He was one of those sorts of. Do you know what? I mean, this is overblown praise, perhaps, but I saw him in the in the style of Bobby Moore, not. You know, I'm not sort of saying he was at, at that level. I'm, I'm sure he wouldn't even claim that himself. But in the style of play, I never saw Bobby Moore play in the flesh. But the, the way in which he sort of timed everything to perfection, the way in which he didn't really have to rely much on blood and gut style defending, the way that everything was timed well, the way that he was elegant on the ball, as we just saw in some of those assists. I absolutely loved him. I thought he was an absolutely brilliant defender. And I, I mean, I, I, I guess he could have qualified to play for the United States or or or, um, or England. I don't know. I, I think he did. He ever get in the United States squad? I don't know. But I, I there was a period, and I suppose it was probably in the mid nineties, early to mid nineties, where I thought he could have got an England cap. I thought he was mm -hmm. that good. Um, he, he was our best player for a long time, but a, as you said in that brilliant film, you know, he was an undemonstrative sort of a captain. In fact, the idea that he took over from Julian Dix as captain is very funny because both as players and as men, it's like you, you, like chalk and cheese. Yeah. Wonderful that they were in the same team together, but what a change of gear for the West Ham squad when, when Dix left and Potts took over the armband. Yeah. Well, I think you... I think you, you absolutely got it with him there the idea of him being uh um you can't imagine steve potts losing his temper you just can't mm. imagine that and that's why i might flesh out for those of you who, who didn't see it the the sending off which was two yellow cards within a minute uh, uh but I, I remember yes. watching that game so well i remember that being the sort of game that was when newcastle <laughs> were absolutely terrifying opposition they were just, that was the, the sweetest spot of their sweet spot in that season in the mid 90s in the Keegan Golden era. And Ginola was on absolute fire. And I remember watching that when I was a student with some mates and actually being sort of almost nauseous with fear because Newcastle <laughs> were doing so well and we were doing so badly. And I knew, I mean, I always much preferred Steve Potts at centre back. Yeah. Then right back, personally, I just thought that was a better position for him. Yeah. But I remember that night, he had to, for whatever reason, line up against Ginola, who was the best player in the Premier League at that moment. And I, yeah. that. And I knew it. I knew it. I thought, this is going to, Steve Potts is going to have a nightmare evening. And he did, I mean, uh, you'll, you'll remind me more specifically, because I haven't seen him yet, but my memory is, is he just, uh, he had to take him, he just got skinned alive twice in a row and had to both times take him down. The, the, the worst thing was that these things should happen so close together. Because I yeah. reckon if it had been like 
15 minutes aside, the ref might have gone, you know, okay, I'll let that one go, but giving him a stern talking, doing a bit of finger waving. But the fact that this had happened within a minute and and the fans, the Newcastle fans applauded him off the pitch. I don't know if you remember Uh, that. I don't remember that bit. we, we, We really cannot. And, you know, Newcastle fans aren't necessarily the most gracious with their applause. Um, as as seen by certain Everton goalkeepers having to be dropped from when they're playing Newcastle because of how they will react to the fans. <laughs> but um, there is another one who, uh, another one of the the um, great players. I'll just give you a little, a, a little a bit of salt in the, the um, or a bit of sugar, I should say, in the drink, who also got done by Ginola. Um, uh, in fact, the following season, who's going to come up as a hammer in a in a couple of weeks? But we'd, so just if you are sticking with us, uh, just remember David uh, Ginola or Ginola. You Ginola mm-hmm. or Ginola? I say Ginola, but I mean uh, you know. But it's like it's like um, uh, Moose calling uh, uh, Adrian Adrian. Oh. <laughs> what, what that, Adrian. I told him that. I told him that, and he just looked at me like I was an idiot. Oh, so I've got Adrian coming out now. Adrian, can you go between it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah, I, I wanted I wanted to just, well, first of all, can, can we um, put the, the thing to bed about how much taller Dan is than Steve? Okay. Dan Potts is 1.72 metres and Steve was 1.7. So it's actually only, what is that? Two centimeters. He's two centimeters taller than his dad, and I'm told that Steve is to be seen at Luton quite a lot um, these days. Apparently, uh, if it's one point seven two and one point seven, isn't that two millimeters bigger than his dad? Surely not. No. Is no. it? No. It would be seven o two and seven. Oh eight. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, it's the yeah. real crux of the, of the debate. Two, 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 two centimeters. Two centimeters is a decent amount. It's yes, yeah, yeah, it, in, in height in height terms, it is. Yeah, and as yeah. you know, players these days, like myself, um, tend to wear their their hair short. So yeah, you know the, the height difference. You know, if you've got some whopping great mane of hair on your head, if, you probably if, have if you're Ricardo Vaz Tay, oh, you yes. can you can easily compensate for <laughs> up to, I would say half a meter with at his least. hair. Too. Yeah, at least. Well, right. Okay, let's dig up. Um, we'll have a little look at Steve in, in the this is your life, Steve mode. I, I don't know if you've on it, but quite interesting. Um, capped, and this was the way he, the thing is, you can be capped at schoolboy and youth level and still go to a different country. But yeah. he was capped at schoolboy and all youth levels, and he did make that decision that he was going to want to play for England. Uh, and as you said, right. yeah, I'm English because mum and dad both English. Thank you, Mark Hughes. Blimey. So he hasn't been getting many jobs since he uh, left the <laughs> Not the yeah. Mark Hughes, unfortunately. No, no, not the Mark Hughes. How but... do you know that? Are you certain? <laughs> I, I, I'm certain. I'm okay. certain. Right. I'm certain. I'm certain. And, and, and Mark Hughes also, um, he, he has emailed me to say, uh, Steve was actually a fly half, not a scrum half. So apologies. Ooh. The trouble is, well, he's a stickler for detail on this show. Mark, right? well, Mark Hughes is. Mark Hughes is a stickler. And he's in that video, he's in that picture. He's sitting next to Steve. So ah, is that where you got uh, the picture from? That's where I, I got the picture from. Right. There you go. Carry right. on. Right. Carry on, Martin. You must submit immediately you notice any errors because yes. there'll be a few deliberately dropped ones in here, like Donald Trump is the president of the United States. That's a little mm. I'm not sure that is an error. Um <laughs> So we're going to ask the same kind of questions about all the players we're going to look at. We're obviously going to get very different answers. So we've got to say Steve coming in right from the the beginning, like Mark Noble did. There's a nice little sort of symmetry here with Nobes achieving that 506 goal recently against Mm. Leicester City. Um, And there was a lovely feature in the programme about the two of them putting them together and having that joined uh, shirt. That was always good. I'm sure you. This is for something that for fans who are watching my stand now who will now be able to make a little more sense of that picture. So you probably won't know who Steve Potts was if you're very young, but you should. You should. Um, so I'm going to ask a few questions. I'm going to put a few things out there. Then I'm going to tell you some incredible 
cutovers that you will not believe which players played with the, with other famous players in the same team. And it's only when you really do your history, you think, oh my God. For example, would you think that Billy Bonds ever played in the same team as Steve Potts? We'll find out about that in a moment. We're, and would you think that, because the issue was, at West Ham at the time Steve came through, it's what I'm going to call the Clements Shilton Parks situation. Do you know what I'm at? Does anyone get what I'm getting at when I yeah, say Clements yeah. Parks? Right. It's just your bad luck as a great footballer to come through as a particular type of player just when two other guys of the same talent come through. And, of course, West Ham being West Ham, our... Uh, I would argue greatest goalkeeper was in, was my goalkeeper in my uh, top 11, Phil, Philip Parks, Phil Parks, for him to appear at the same time as Ray Clements and Peter Shilton. What bad luck is that? He's still got a cap for England, but yeah. that's yeah. the worst luck in the, in the world. I, I'll tell you what, though. I mean, I mean, I mean a bit of a tangent, but, but I was re-watching some old England uh, stuff over the summer when they released all the World Cup films onto Amazon. And... Peter Shilton is the most overrated goalkeeper in the history of football, right? It, like, every time England got knocked out of a tournament, it was because of a glaring error by Peter Shilton. I mean, by the time we were in Italian 90, Phil Parks' knees had gone by then, right? Yeah. As I remember it, he couldn't dive, so George Paris's job was to push him over when the ball came, <laughs> right? That's so that's, true. That's why George Paris was in the team. It was his main role. Even Phil Parks could have played ahead of Peter Shilton at Italia 90. was that bad, right? So that, so I get your point. The three keepers who are three sort of legendary keepers, particularly Shilton and Clements, but Shilton shouldn't have been in the running. It's a tragedy that um, Parks mm. only won one. But anyway, I'm sure you're going to do Phil Parks another day. So you don't, 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 re don't mm -hmm. realise what a superb segue that is because mm -hmm. George Paris was one of those players who was there at the time when Steve Potts was there, he had Ray Stewart just on the way out. Billy Bond's still playing, of course, played into his 40s. Um, and if I just throw something out there, can anyone, anyone out there, you've got to do this quickly, otherwise I'll have to answer it because we've only got a certain amount of time. Uh, uh, can you make a link between Billy Bond's and Steve Potts in their careers? What did they share? A, a horrific a horrific um, stat. Well, Bonds has got to have scored more than one goal. It's not actually something mm. they did on the pitch. It was actually something they did not getting onto the pitch, is my clue. Okay. Okay. I what was know. the only season that Billy Bonds didn't play for West Ham? Oh, 85, 86. Right. Who made his debut for West Ham as a substitute? Uh, oh, sorry, just one game in that season. Uh, that's Steve Potts. Steve Potts. Indeed. In fact, it, 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 what he he made his debut the season before. I was, I was expecting something oh, to come quickly. 84, 85. He, he did make one appearance in the 85, 86 season, which I made a note of here. I think it was, um, he made his debut against, um, I think QPR. against QPR. Uh, yeah. And what does he share with um, Tony Cotty about debuts? I don't know. Uh, uh, he didn't score. He didn't score. Debut, debut, sure. didn't he didn't score. Day, day of the year. Day of the year. What did you, did you just? I think you might have said it there. What did you say, Sam? I heard. Was, first. It, New Year's, was it New Year's Day? It was New Year's Day. Yes. Oh, well done, Sam. Yeah, mm. So, so it's one of that was that was his that was his debut, and I and I suppose. Um, some interesting things are uh, just some things that will will fascinate you in terms of who he played with because you got Ray Stewart on the way out basically towards the end of his career. You've got um, George Paris and you've got Billy Bonds. And the thing, the other thing that links um, Billy Bonds and uh, Steve Potts is that they both came to the club as right backs and they were both converted into midfield players. And actually, that's why. You said that thing about Bobby Moore. I think um, there were there are times, of course, Billy Bonds had that slightly rougher edge to him, but times when he too could make those fantastic tackles, tackles that no player seems to want to make these days. Mm. Well, you're, not, you're not allowed to, are you? No, you're not. Oh, any right. kind of tackle, even if you win the ball, if there's even an evidence of a second foot there, you're going to get a yellow. Just after, a... after Masuaku. 
Even yes. if you if you waft your foot in the in the vicinity of an opposition player, <laughs> you're getting penalised for it. Is, Salah actually fooled both the referee and Masuak. Masuak, who's it stopped? Like, yeah, yeah. He was like, oh, what's, oh, that, what's oh, happened? What has happened? Penalty. Yes, you are having a lot. So let me show you. Let me read you off. This was the team, and this gives you an idea. So we're looking at the longevity of Steve Potts career tonight. Yeah. This is the team that he made his debut for West Ham in. So get this 11 and think about the last 11 he played in. These players were playing regularly for West Ham when Steve first on the shirt. McAllister, Paul Brush, Alan Dickens, Alvin Martin, Tony Gale. Um, that would be, would that be Paul Allen? That would be Paul Allen, will not it? Um, yeah. Hilton, Goddard, Cotty and Neil Orr. They were playing when Steve Potts first donned the donned the uh, the shirt. But in that this first, if you look at his first four seasons at West Ham, only twenty appearances. Bearing in mind this is a guy wow. who's going to make five hundred and six appearances, mm. four seasons, twenty games. Which let's face it, you could play half a season and do those, couldn't you? So he mm. plays that one game. By the time he plays his next game. The following season, this is the team he's playing in. Parks, Paris, Walford Gale, Martin, Devonshire, Ward, McAvenny, Cotty, and or again. So and that was a that was a way to Ipswich. That was when he came on as a sub. And guess who was injured for him to come on? Oh, you heard his name there. He got injured. He was he he was the, he would have gone in the Andy Carroll um it would have been in the Andy Carroll suite relative these days because he was one of the very few West Ham players who got injured a lot but probably one of our greatest players top five players Alan Devonshire got it in one yep he I believe he replaced Devonshire I'm ready for something to be thrown in so that's his second season third season 86 87 we've had 85 86 so he is part of that side that finished third. Still the best position that West Ham have ever uh, occupied in the top league. Um, if they won their last game, they would have finished seventh, uh, second if they'd beaten Everton. That was another yeah. story. But um, the next season, so he's, he's played two games in two complete seasons. Um, and now he plays in an 86-87 side. And this also a slightly, di slightly different team. Although uh, uh, you've got a bit of a mixture of the others. Parks himself... Paris, Gale, Martin, Devonshire, Ward, McAvenny, Ince. Mm. <laughs> Just wait for a hiss. I can't hear any hiss. Mm. Uh, Cotty and Orr. And this is a very, very young Paul Ince. So these are the players that Steve Potts is playing with. And um, Cotty, Tony Cotty, made his transfer request to John Lyle after that game. And that was a game where Steve Potts came in for Billy Bonds. So that's not bad, is it? Bill's not playing this week. Steve, yeah. you um, put the number two shot on. Oh, Bonds, no problem. Yeah, yeah, I know we've only played three games for West Ham the last three years. So he goes on. So not just like him, but following in his footsteps. Um, and then the last season, uh, Bonds' is last season, 87 88, these players played in the same team. Ray Stewart. Steve Potts and Billy Bonds, all in the same team. Can you imagine? Imagine going to see that game. Then they also played in the same game against, uh, they played it at home to Watford and away to Man United. And then who was he replaced by in April 88? This is ridiculous that all these players at the same time, why weren't we winning the league then? He is mm -hmm. replaced by someone making his debut for West Ham, another legend in the top 10, if not top five. In 1988, yeah. Julian Dix. He's got it, absolutely. Dix comes in for oh, Potts. Yeah. It's just nuts, isn't it? And when you think about them two, the two being very different, as you said early mm. on, which is extraordinary. And in this one game, there's only one game, but in one game, Bonds, Dix and Potts played in West Ham shirts for the team just once. And somehow that team lost. Against, against against Southampton. Anyway, there we are. So he only really starts to to uh, to notch up the appearances in 
a relegation season, 88-89. Started at right back, and it, he, again, it, George Paris and Ray Stewart were around. Uh, got himself in and out of the team. Um, and this was, of course, um, John Lyle's last season as manager. So all credit to Lyle. Lyle is the man who's bringing him in and blooding him and giving him a chance to play because he's still very, very young in the side, but he's, he's letting him play there. Now, in that particular season, 88-89, if you think about what a young player faces, uh, there are some players, aren't they, who, who's, uh, bearing in mind, he's already been in a West Ham team uh, that have finished third, so probably at the back of his mind. You couldn't mm -hmm. be blamed mm -hmm. for thinking, who knows, this might be the team that wins the league. I mean, we've all thought that, although we're normally dreaming at the time as West Ham fans. So he comes in and 88-89, you've got this amazing side, including uh, Paul Ince, who was absolutely whatever anyone thinks about him. I, look at I, some I, of yeah, look, yeah. look at some of the games he plays for West Ham mm -hmm. in that season. And West Ham, you may have noticed under a certain manager in the late in the early part of this century, who took us down who managed to win more games in the two cup competitions than in the entire league, which is, which I don't think anyone's ever done that before. West Ham, beware good cup runs. When West Ham have good cup runs, very often it's relegation time. Look at the European Cup Winners' Cup, what we got at the final in 76. Did we win a game in 1976 at the end of the 75, 76 season? We started at Christmas, we were about third or fourth. I don't think we won a game. But meanwhile, we're getting to the semi-final. That we're getting to the final of the Cup Winners' Cup, <laughs> losing every single week and going down the table. Thankfully, the season finished, or we would have got relegated. It stopped. That's it. So you imagine he's he's a right back now, and this is where um, he's having to cover for players that are getting injured. So possibly Steve Potts was seen in other positions which he had to fill. I, I mean, that's a complete guess. But that's often how you see players in different positions. I, I remember, for those who are as old as me, uh, people people in their 60s will remember Tommy Taylor, a centre-half from West Ham. There was a little experiment where Ron Green would play him up front for about 10 minutes, I think. No, it was about three or four games, and he, he didn't score. If he'd scored a goal, he might have kept him there, but he didn't. I don't know what, what gave him this idea, but um, so... so Steve Potts, they're, they're looking at him in different positions, but West Ham get relegated. And also, Steve had a terrible thing happen to him on a plastic pitch that season, 88-89. Anyone remember that? Yeah, you, you haven't got people chucking things down, have you? Little suggestions. Is anyone old enough to be able to be good with a phone and also, <laughs> that's the trouble. If you go back, if you go back in past, into the past, people probably they're not following. Oh, yeah, it. yeah. The players, the players at that time, bless them. They're not very, yeah, they're not very techno savvy. Some of them lot, but yeah, it's. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, he, he, no, he the oh, Steve Gerrard against Chelsea is your clue. What did Steve Gerrard do against Chelsea? That he's oh, won? a bat, a bat pass that got us, uh, that that cost us. Was that the crucial game? Was it a back pass that cost us the relegation? It, well, it, it was the semi final against Luton. It was actually their, yeah. oh, I was sorry, their yeah. first their first goal, and they ran away with it in the end. Uh, yeah. and we, we we were drummed out. A, a two legged semi final, wasn't it? And yeah. they beat us in both games, did they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, yeah. I sort of parcel it up with the Oldham fiasco as well. <laughs> the, the other one is something else. People yeah. forget that Billy Bonds led us to a 3 0 victory in the second leg. But that's I was at that second leg. And when we went 3 0 up and were sort of effectively playing five up front, I I uh, made the mistake. <laughs> I, ma I made the mistake because I was still young enough to believe. I made the mistake of believing, of having hope. <laughs> but obviously, that's been beaten out of me since then. And yeah, I yeah. don't make those mistakes anymore now. My mission is to try and stop my son from having that same kind of hope and expectation <laughs> and belief inside of him. Because so it was, ultimately, it, was, it only leads to pain. Spurs three, West Ham nil, nine minutes to go. You lose I, to hope. I told him, I said, forget it. I'm watching my son, I'm saying, forget it. We might as well switch over. You went to the loo and came back downstairs and it was I three. What, what I actually did was I had the TV in the background and I started cooking dinner. 
and sort of pretended to myself that I wasn't really watching. And yeah. but the, te the telly was like within, you know, my eye line. And then you you your ear you sort of hear, don't you? You listen out for the like um, fluctuations in the commentary. Yeah. So you turn round and but you know, let's not think that that's ever going to happen again because it won't. No, no. We'll, we'll, we'll we'll um we'll come back to that I think but let's let's stick, let's stick with Potsy and I just want to tell you about what a young player goes through. He's seen what he's been in he's been part of the squad where West Ham have come third. Yeah. 88 89 relegation John Lyle being given the boot and that was a shock for West Ham fans. They've been moaning at Lyle all season and they weren't happy they went down but nobody was expecting him to be sacked. I I certainly that's my memory. Uh, and then to bring Lou Macari in, I mean, with the idea was that you had a manager who had some kind of connection with the club. And there were people much older than me always saying, it's going to end in tears. And weren't they right? But um, having said that, that was the beginning of a, an important player for Steve Potts because Steve Potts, when he managed his ever-present he managed it with another player who it seems to me around that time was also ever present. And that was. What, at centre back with him? In the team, who played in the team with him, who was also ever present, who actually came to the club, is your clue, in the Lou Macari season. Mick Lou Lusco. Macari. Mick Lusco. He's so much, so much on fire. Yeah. He's on fire. Yes, Mick Lusco. And we'll see how. Ludo and Steve Potts really link together. It's a temptation, therefore, to kind of bring... Also, they were the similar heights, if you think about it. <laughs> um, so, Lou Macari brings in um, uh, McCloskey, but it doesn't stay long enough to see him make his debut. Bonds is given the... Basically, he's given the hot plate. Uh, manages to, get, uh, to, to calm West Ham down a little bit. Following season, they get promoted. So you've got Potts in his career already as a young man. He's seen relegation. He's seen a team finish third. And then the next season under Bonds, he gets promoted. Do you know that Chris Hutton played for us on loan that season? I, I, I don't even remember. Oh. I've obviously blotted it out. but it, it, Yeah, no, because Julian Dix got a really bad injury. I think that's, yeah. that's how it happened, wasn't it? So we had to get, get Chris we're Hutton. Getting into, we're getting into Sam's period now. So uh. I, I, that's not, <laughs> The other thing I didn't realise is that Potsy played in that 4-0 semi-final defeat against um, Nottingham Forest where Billy Bonds found Blue Army. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, so Potts was part of that side. That was a fantastic side that was. We still botched getting the, the championship at the end of 1991 season. Mm. But so he's got relegation, promotion, and then in the 91-92 season, the, the Bond scheme season, um, they get they got relegated. Bonds has done something that no other West Ham manager has done before, which is that he's got West Ham promoted twice. So even as a manager, he's achieved something. And in the 92-93 season, that's a key season for Steve Potts, who finally settles down into his perfect position. And the season, I, I haven't actually mentioned his goal, really, but I don't want to make too much about that because he'll get the hump about that. Because he's had so much stick. About that, and also the fact that Colin Benson did the commentary. I, I voiced it over, but it was Colin Benson's original. So you know, you think it'd be something special. But ninety-two, ninety-three, fifty games, first season, first choice. It's the first season that he was an absolute guaranteed shoe-in first choice for his position. And in his first season as first choice in his position, Hammer of the Year, and he is. Uh, that's the first time he takes over from. Alvin Martin. I mean, it's as you say, it, 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 the, as the commentary said, it's Harry Redknapp who, who gave him that as a kind of a permanent thing. But he had been captain before. He took over as captain when uh, Alvin Martin was injured. Um, and and then they get promoted. So, again, as a young player, he's already had two relegations, two promotions and finished third. So I think he, he was a really experienced player, even as a young player. Mm. He'd... He'd got through these things that a lot of players probably only have one of in their career. Mm. He's had five of them before he's, you know, he's barely mid-20s. And that 
it's my theory about why what made Potts such a brilliant player. Because he'd seen it all. Nothing could scare him. He'd seen two relegations really quickly. And that thing you said, um, Sam, about him being calm on the ball. And that, that, I don't think it's ridiculous for you to suggest, you know, he had that Bobby Moore touch about him. Because mm-hmm. that's the thing. When opposing strikers see a defender calm on the ball, you see him sometimes not bother to ch- challenge him. Even today in the Premier League. You players kind of just back off, and it's like that. That you've got that confidence on the ball. There, it's like players chasing the goalkeeper when the ball goes back to the. Oh, was Ian Hesford was the whole goalkeeper when Potsy scored? Uh, Kent Hannes has just informed us that. Thank you, bet, yeah, if, if you think Steve Potts has had um, had abuse, I bet that guy's had abuse. You're the guy who conceded the goal. Wild, <laughs> oh, what I'd forgotten about was. I, I was at that game, and I was—I think it was—I was on the north bank, and I think it was scored right there. To, the, he was shooting that end. It was I, what, yes. what I had, what I'd forgotten about was that he'd had another effort, and that, yeah. uh, because when you say score one goal, I thought he'd only actually had one shot. I thought he'd—I thought he'd had a hundred percent success rate <laughs> with his shot, <laughs> right? Which I thought was pretty, that was a great. That, but perhaps made it his, uh, you know, probably the best stats for any goal scorer in West Ham's history. Yeah. One shot, one goal. And but, that, and that, that but Don Hutchinson. Watching that back, I don't remember him that, that first shot. It was a much better shot. Great save. <laughs> so that's obviously given him some confidence. So he thought, yeah. oh, I might actually be all right at this. And they think he that, never that's, right. that's when he hit the shot and scored. That's and they, why he hit the second it. shot. Yeah. I've done it now. Well, it. That's my goal. I don't need yeah. to do it. But then, obviously, when when that when, when the clips you, you put together, Martin, that, that Don Hutchinson goal, it, he could have easily laid it off to to Steve to score that one against Liverpool. That, that was that was a shoeing. That was that was an easier shot. That, that when, was... when when we were looking at that, as, I mean, I've got to say about that one because I thought right, we, I did. I thought when it said when you said right, he didn't score. He only scored the one, but he did get a lot of assists. I thought to myself, did he though? And then you start showing off. Oh, yeah, I didn't really thought him. So I didn't think of him. I thought of him as a fantastic defender. But even at yeah. fullback, I didn't think of him as a particularly attacking fullback. You know, we brought Tim Breaker into playing that position because he was yeah. much more buccaneering, right? And um, I've got to say that Hutchison goal. I think, it, yeah, I think it was the Hutchison one. I thought that's not really an assist because no, he plays. He, he plays it. I thought you're scraping here. You're clutching at straws. That's not that it. It, it, it. That's just like he played a part in the build-up to a goal. <laughs> <laughs> that, that would have been disallowed by VAR, by the way. Like yeah, the less- yeah, yeah. He doesn't get the fantasy league points for that one. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it, was an, it was an ambitious run. Trevor Morley. I know you know it was a pot. Oh. It was a pot's montage, and I really enjoyed it. By the way, it was brilliant. Oh, yeah. much. But the main thing I noticed was I'd forgotten the state of Morley's Barnet and and moustache combination when he first arrived. But, you know, he came down from Manchester. And in those days, I think that look was fairly de rigueur in Manchester. But yeah. in London, it wasn't. And I, and he's turned up, the pair of them, him and Bish turned up together. Bish has got, like, looks like he's in yeah. Iron Maiden. And, and Morley looked like one of the three musketeers. But he only he only retained that look for a few games, I think, and then in the end he must have just got so many pelters about it he dropped mm-hmm. it. But in that compilation, every goal he scored, he was still rocking the D'Artagnan look. <laughs> yeah. I think yeah. if he'd been around, you'd have called him Will I Am, and that would be <laughs> ill-advised yeah. moustache. He was uh, he was like he was like embodying of it's like you know, the Tiger King. He looked like he could have been the Tiger King uh, Netflix yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. like that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 We are just gonna say, by the way, that we are really big fans of Trevor Morley, who is a, another Love him. another unsung hero. That season, first season back in or the, the second first season back under Bonds, ninety three four, uh, where he top scored with uh, 16. Clive Allen. Him like and that. Clive yeah. Allen were up front together, weren't yeah. they? Yeah. He, he, everything he touched. And also, he had the joy of scoring a really good goal against Chelsea, which was the only goal of the match. I yeah. know the other players sent off. It would have been Dennis Wise, I'm sure. But um, 
uh, it, it would <laughs> score an only goal in the game and it'd be a great goal, like Declan Rice's goal against Arsenal, for example. Yeah. You want one goal in a game to be a special goal. And that yeah. one, fantastic. Dig it up, anyone who hasn't seen it. Try yeah, and it, you're right. A very underrated player. Definitely. Well, he so he he manages fifty games in the nineteen fifty games is a lot of games, especially these days for players. Cut they can't manage one game after another. Yeah. Fifty games in ninety two ninety three. Hammer of the year, first time. And I've I've written an article about the curse of Hammer of the year, but it, it didn't actually apply to him. The only bad luck he got with that was that he wasn't Hammer of the year the following year. But he was um, also ever present with Ludo. Ludek McCloskey um, and um, and Steve both um, ever present, and again the idea of players being ever present these days is quite unusual. Mm. Uh, 93, 94, next season, um, uh, this is Bonds bringing the side up into what they then called the Premiership, which you heard reference to on the commentary. Now regarded as the Premier League, and if I ever say I did pre say Premiership once. Uh, on the PA, and I got straight in my ear. Oi, Premier League! Sorry, mate, sorry, sorry. Yes, yes you did, Mr. Yodlin. Get that wrong, Premier Ship. You... Well, don't change the name. Yeah. So, 93 94, 50 games again. So, 100 games in two seasons. This is making up for the 20 games in four seasons. 50 games. Bonds as manager. He only missed one game that season. Ludo, yet again, ever present. And then the following season, 94-95, um, um, bit of controversy where Harry and um, Bill um, went their separate ways. Um, <clears throat> there's a there's a show we might be showing later on where Billy Bonds tells all about this. Yes. Mm. Actually, not film of Bill talking about it. But that, that might be shown if, if I can persuade Russ to, to put that on. That's well worth seeing, an interview with Billy Bonds that you will not believe. Uh, we've had it in the can for seven years, but it's almost time to let it out. Almost time to let it out. Um, especially now he's got one side of the stadium named after him. Yeah, exactly. Now, yeah. Bill can take that now. So, 94 95, Redknapp as manager, and he's uh, Steve Potts permanently captain now, second hammer of the year, and ever present again. Ludo didn't get too many good cut runs that season, so he managed 48. But again, 148 games in three seasons. That, in effect, is uh, just a little under a third of his career appearances. This is a man, really, who could have who could have had 700 appearances if there hadn't been so many good players in the side with him at the beginning of his career. And it took him a long time to get through. Antonio is another one. Remember how long it took him to get, relatively speaking, into the first team. And then he wasn't going to – the minute Bilic put him in, he is now – mind you, he was playing right back and right wing, and he was playing in three – you know, I think at the end of the game where he used to take his shot off and lie in the centre of the park pitch, and all the steam would come off his body. Yeah. That's a Mikhail Antonio moment. So we've got these three fantastic seasons for Potsy. 92, 93, 93, 94, 94, 95. Two hammers of the year. Starts with a promotion – 150 appearances, give or take, under two. So, but he just has incredibly, even though a player at the top of his game, he only had one more season where he was an automatic pick, and that was 95 96, 40 games there. And here's the sort of players who he was playing with by this time the same player playing with Danny. You remember Danny? Uh, uh, Ian Dowie. Is Danny and Dowie in the same team? You talk wow. about. Beauty in the beast. But those two. So if you had mind you, you Potsy, as as Harry made reference to him on those clips, Potsy was a, it, it was he's a good looking lad himself. Yeah. So he, he he must have felt gutted when Danny turned up yeah. because he, he would have been voted handsomest hammer like the ten years, run, ten years running. Yeah. And then suddenly this, this lad from Portugal's turned up and you're like, wow, game changer. <laughs> no, you've never, got, never you've thought got, I'd meet a man handsomer than me, but that guy, you've got to take your hat off to him. Oh. But he's at the back. He still looks handsome because you've got Julian Dix on one side, him on the other. So right. you've got Beauty and the Beast at the back and you've got Beauty and the Beast at the front. Yeah, so you've got that's two, right. two beasts. Mm. 
It's a bit scary that 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 was that was a very strange season. But that's the season before. That was the season he got sent off against Newcastle. Yeah, I can't believe that had anything to do with it. But um, yeah, it, possibly having his testimonial at the beginning of the ninety six ninety seven season. So he's he's born in sixty seven. So he's not quite thirty. For God's sake, we sign players and we sign strikers for West Ham at 34, or we used to. Mm -hmm. yeah. oh, we'll get another half a season out of them. How much are they? Are oh, they only th three million pounds? That'll do. And then, yeah. and then he's cropped for the next three years and then he retires, <laughs> whoever the, he is. You know what I mean? So, yeah. So there, that is Potts' last big season. And he does his testimonial at the beginning of 96, 97. Um, and interestingly enough, Who's got, hang on, lots of us are more handsome than him. Last choice of women of the year for Calais. Oi, Mark, <laughs> he's not, ju not, not judging by that team photo I saw earlier. Yeah, oh. exactly. Well, that was I'm third thinking... year. Well, they probably would have yeah. got in by then, wouldn't they? Know, yeah. What's third year? 15, yeah. something like that? Yeah, I thought, I thought he, he was easily the best looking player in that rugby team. <laughs> I mean, not that, I mean, it's easy to be the best looking lad in a rugby team, mind you. Yeah. With all the cauliflower ears well, and stuff. Um, I'm going to ask you, the Steve that replaced Steve Potts as captain, how do the two of them rate, rate as captains? Who was the Steve who replaced him? Was it Steve Lomas? Who indeed scored in his testimonial, the second goal. It was like a almost like a pre-premonition uh, there. So what? how are these guys different kinds of captains, would you say? Well, you I, I, oh, I'd say Steve Lomas was certainly a more vocal uh, sort of a captain, wasn't he? I mean, he was a he was a hard working sort of dynamo. Put himself out. Was probably what was a little bit more rough and ready than Potsy in terms of the sort of tackles he'd put in in midfield. And you know, he was he was fiery. He was a fiery character. That's how I think of Steve Lomas. Mm. And Steve Potts was again not just in his style of play, but his style of leadership. Again, in the Bobby Moore tradition. You know, he wasn't. He wasn't. You didn't see him shouting his head off. Um, he just led by by calm example, basically, mm -hmm. and and that was what you what you said in that in that film was, you know, he led by example, and you can imagine that when you're playing and you got your backs to the wall and things get a bit chaotic and you're a goal down or whatever, having that you know sometimes it helps to have someone who's going to clench their fist and shout at you all, but sometimes you look at the guy who's wearing the armband and he's completely ice cool about the mm -hmm. whole thing and just yeah. gets on with the game. That inspires confidence, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. So I guess that's why he captained us so long. But yeah, di really different from Steve Lomas. Yeah, it could be and more what different. About, what about Premier League um, for the for the poor old younger fans who don't know what the hell we're talking about? I haven't understood it. <laughs> um, who would you say are the kind of captains now in 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 football who are the same of the same temperament as as Steve Potts? Is, is that is that does that still work for captains or are they always going to be kissing the badge and you know rrr. well I, I think you actually get more players like more captains like Steve Potts and less like Julian Dix now because yeah. the, the the game doesn't really have so many of those players because they just I mean it's for various reasons one of them is is that you just can't play in that sort of style mm. that the likes of Julian Dix and Steve Lomas did you you just wouldn't ever see out a game if you played even half at uh, half you know measures of the julian dix way or the steve lomans way so you don't so i think you get more players like that i mean you know declan is not a shouter is he really i mean he's got a, he's got an air about him of a leader mm. but i don't see him balling players out and all of that really De De no, he shouts at himself more than he shouts at the other players have you seen yeah. him shout himself when he makes a mistake a frustration like, oh, yeah yeah why yeah why you minded that yeah yeah i never saw steve potts do that steve potts didn't <laughs> shout himself or anyone did he really he got upset when he got his eyes kicked in and that by that I know, yeah <laughs> Blood pouring out his face. He's like, he's good at that though. He's just sort of like almost saying sorry. Yes, yeah, sorry about it. I've made a mess. Yeah. Yes, I'm not <laughs> blood on the pitch. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, Dougie. Or it would be these days. Wouldn't be Dougie uh, then. No. So, um, how does he rate? This is the qu the question we get to. How does he rate alongside other West Ham greats? And just how great was he in the history of the club? Bearing in mind, none of us saw. 
the much of the early part <laughs> of the of the uh, 20th century. We're, so we're looking about the last 30, 40 years. How does he rate alongside other West Ham greats? And and how great in the history of as far back as we can we can see? Where do we put him? Well, for me, I mean, like my my time sporting West Ham started in the 80s, really, and and I put him when I did my West Ham eleven with Russ. I put him in the team, I think, didn't I? And yeah, the reason why you're I mean, here, yeah, exactly. So the re the reason I did that was obviously there's lots of different candidates for that position. So you look at you know Rio, I was a massive fan of and thought in just technical ability even when he was younger, was probably the best I saw in that position. Mm. But he was nowhere near, he never reached anywhere near his peak at West Ham. He was way off. He went, and then, and so, you know, and then Billich, I thought, even though he was only with us for one season, he was one of the best defenders I've ever seen at West Ham. And, you know, there's been a, a few, few since then as well. But I thought, well, Potts was just, as, as you have illustrated, was just consistently... Yeah. Very, very good and occasionally brilliant for such a long period. You know, it's really hard for anyone. I think I think I put him with Alvin in the back in 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 those two centre back positions. And I would say in my lifetime, which obviously discounts Bobby Moore, mm. I would put him and Alvin as the two greats in those positions. I would, mm. because it, I think he, he in another era he could have played for England. But I think forget about England. You know, the, the the fact is, in terms of what he did for us and and the the amount of games as you've described, he played and the amount of games he captained us in. And I never saw Steve Potts have a bad game, apart from maybe that Newcastle game. But I mean, bloody hell, that I think anyone would have struggled against um, David Ginola that night. Yeah, yeah. He didn't get a chance to have a good game. He if he'd stayed, yeah. he might as well have then played um, Ginola. He's yeah. up there. We're saying most my very yeah. nice. Yeah, very okay. true. Agreed there. Made the most of his talent. That's an it. That's a, an inspired comment. But what I'm hearing is consistency. Yeah. That's, that's, yeah. And, and I'm sure it's an adjective that's been used to describe. Uh, it's actually a noun, isn't it? But you know what I mean. Consistent. Mm, yeah. I say. Consistent. Yeah. He, he's him being a consistent player. Um, isn't this the problem we have with modern players? They're not even playing every game. And we go, oh, he's had a he's had a stinker. I mean, mm. for me, Antonio has only had one bad game this season, and that was the Newcastle game. And right. I, I started mm. to think maybe we only play well as a team in terms of scoring goals, because that's the thing we've got to do. When Antonio shows that pace, when you know that if anything's gonna happen in the area, you've got Antonio there to do something with it. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it's I, the same, I think, it's about to say it's the same as the same as Deck. I mean, Deck's only had one bad game this season i'd say which was the newcastle game yeah. and he was probably a six and he's yeah, he has yeah, such yeah. a high standard be like pots he's in a, a, a little dip in form and you know everyone's like, oh his head's turned he's going to chelsea that's yeah, why yeah. he just had a bad game you know he just yeah. played two international games yeah um, he was tired and, and, and that was the organization <laughs> was as soon as he had a time to like work work on that, that he was straight back to being exactly. nine out of ten minimum every game exactly that's he just showed you the the and it's something that you get from players who are hammer of the year because obviously to be hammer of the year you've got to be consistent so that's yeah. why he's won it twice and I would point out that the only other player in recent uh, history who's won that many times is Scott Parker who I believe has won it three times and I believe there is a season he won it when he only played eighteen league games it wasn't it's even Scott Parker. But right. Scott Parker, yeah, one of them. That, that, and didn't Julian but, win it a couple of times at least? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, but, yeah. Another player who was, I mean, he was just oh, yeah. he was all the time. But the thing, yeah. but that's before that. I'm talking about when I say in recent years. I mean, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Century, shall we say? Yeah. Scott yeah. Parker, who virtually for all of those games, if you if you care about when people say someone's man of the match, he was winning man of the match every game. Yeah, like deck. Often gets that, doesn't it? You look yeah, at the end, yeah. man of the match, Declan Rice. Yeah, okay, of course. Yeah, I um, remember. I remember when we had Ian Wright, and Ian Wright would literally walk on the pitch and get man of the match because it was voted for by the uh, match day sponsors. And they and wanted the, to meet him. <laughs> yeah. Ian Wright kicks the ball, man of the match. Ian Wright, what? Yeah, I remember <laughs> that. Yeah, yeah. So funny. 
Do you remember the Leeds game that we lost? Was yeah. Five one. Do you remember that we had? Um, uh, it's good point. Good point. Potsy was good runner point, up twice nice. as well in those other two seasons in that purple patch. So well, well spotted. Um, but yeah, the the in uh, in that that ridiculous the ridiculous thing about oh please please if you just just don't get sent off just to, this is a guy who's only been sent off once in his career and it's not even really a sending off moment is it really so he's he's even he's not just consistent because to be a defender and to mm. not get sent off am mm. I being cynical here how can you be a good defender and not get sent off haven't you got to have a bit of a steal is, is it, this is why I'm saying about do we have defenders who are who never get booked? Name me one in the Premier League who never gets booked. I know things are a bit tighter, but but everyone gets booked because everyone goes in a bit harder. But yeah. and this- sometimes you just have to take one for the team as well. Yeah. Some, yeah. Sometimes I mean they're told nowadays. I don't know if it was such a big thing back then. You could get away with it more then, but now you are expected to take your yellow card if the other yeah. team are about to counter attack. And you don't feel you're going to be able to get back. You, you are, yeah, you are expected to to bring that player down and take your yellow. But um, he doesn't even, he didn't even really do do that sort of thing, did he? Yeah. Well, it's like it's like you said that. It's like you said, Sam. I think he's he's actually probably a more modern day defender than you know. You look at someone like you know, even like Van Dyke and stuff like that. It, he doesn't. They don't tackle anymore. Now, you know, they, they they just read the game and just don't let them go past. And that was I, I thought Potts was quite like an Italian defender. Yeah, yeah, good shot. In, in that era, particularly in the era of like Baresi and Maldini and stuff, and you used to watch the Channel Four yeah, football Italia in that era, yeah, and yeah. you'd see these defenders, and you saw like they never had any mud on them. Right, they just yeah. they were t- they, they, suits. They, yeah, like, yeah. Juventus, Juventus they were, they were, um, they're immaculate. Yeah. All the suits. Well, you don't. I don't want to get my hair damaged. Yeah. Matt Potsy, he always looked coiffured. He looked absolutely perfect. Yeah. But even that time, as you say, the blood. He's still there's a certain elegance yeah. in there. Blood thing, but, but the, the blood other thing, just trickles down his, his jawline. Do you know what I mean? He's got such a pronounced jawline that he just yeah. like jaw. pronounced. <laughs> Shaping the same by size. He was incredibly shy. It is still a very shy. Not nearly as shy now, now he's done the managerial thing. Because I've seen Potsy shout now from the as in the position of manager, shouting at players, because yeah. you can't really you can't be a manager and not shout, can you? I suppose. No, not really. You've got to shout at the players now. So Potsy has found his inner his inner shout, mm. hasn't he? Finally, he's, right? a, he's no longer whispering Steve Potts. <laughs> Steve Potts. <laughs> so it took us four years to get him to do an interview. Um, from 91 to 95, I asked him to do an interview after a game in a 91 92 season. It would have been early on because I picked him because I thought he's going to be really, I, I, you know, you never know what the voice is going to be like. It's like you just see the player and you never know what yeah. they're going to talk about. So um, I actually stopped him and said, Steve, can we just have a, a, a and someone came in between Steve and me. I can't remember who it was. Don't bother, mate. He, he doesn't do interviews. And I thought, he looks like the bloke who would. Because he's so calm. But mm. perhaps he was so aloof. Anyway, one day I, I said, please, please play Steve. And I lied terribly. I said, you know, we do the videos every week, Steve. Everyone says, you know, the, the fans are all really wanting you to know, to, to know what you think about things. And so he went, oh, all right, all right. And it wasn't that he was being difficult. It was that he really was shy, really shy. Mm. But when we actually put the microphone there, we got we got quite a um, quite a good interview. And, that, and that's why we had to put it on that little... Yeah, yeah, yeah. He did a lot more in, in, in later years. Um, if Bonds gets 10, what do we give Steve Potts? Oof. You can have half, you can have half marks. This is going to be the feature... Russ, this is going to be the last question. Okay, this is this is the last question feature. Okay. If Bonds gets 10, cool. what do we give Steve Potts? Bearing in mind you're setting us up for the series. So don't don't give him two. <laughs> Think. There we are. Bonds gets 10. What do you reckon, Russ? Are you gonna go first? I'm gonna go. Seeing he's he's he is my Mr. West Ham. He really is. So for me, Bonds, I never I never only saw him manage, to be honest. That's how young I am. I'm gonna go with we can do half points, can't we, Martin? Yes, half points. Okay. I'm gonna go with an eight point five. 
Okay. I'm going to go. I'm going to go with an eight, which makes me look tight now. <laughs> um, so, Steve, if you are watching, I'm sorry. Yeah. I, I wish I hadn't let Russ go first, but yeah, exactly. I feel duty bound to stick to the first number in my head. And I think if Bonds is ten, Potsy is an eight, and there's not many other players that I would give an eight to. Right. Well, there you, I'm sure you're going to be on this again, so we'll test you out on that. Mm. Uh, uh, bearing in mind, uh, Russ and I are, are going to be doing this every week, so we've got to give ourselves a bit of scope here. Yeah. Uh, well, going... I know, but I know who's coming. Who else we've got on the things? That's why I'm probably at an unfair advantage to Sam. So it's like, yeah. You know, but I'd say eight point five because he was my. Um, <laughs> Mark's Mark, Mark who's popped his mate, he's saying I'm on the WhatsApp group to him right now. Um, so there we go. Um, Delaney's only given you an eight. Delaney's giving you an eight. Well, I'll make you, I'll yeah, make you put a black bet. mark next to his name. I will. I will agree with you, and I will I'll also go for eight. Um, and I, I mean, I saw his whole career right from the beginning, of course, right yeah. the last game. So. Um, I don't, don't that necessarily gives me any more. I mean, I think you must have seen him. So, were you watching him in 84, 85? Of course you were. I would have seen him. Yeah, well, 84 was the first year I sort of went a bit. But it was 85, 86 was the first time I went a lot. And, yeah, so I'd seen him a few bits. But I became much more conscious of him in the early 90s. when he That's when he really yeah. had his golden period, wasn't he it? He started yeah. picking it, finally. Yeah, yeah. But there we are. Yeah, I'll go, I'll go with you. I'll go with you on an eight, and I know okay. that I know that's going to kind of commit myself a little bit. Um, it is. And just to, just as a tangent to that, how good a captain was he? Looking at all the other West Ham captains, do you think he's up there with the very best? For, for, I don't know. I mean, I'd be interested to hear what the players who played with him mm. would have said. I mean. You know, during that era, I suppose it was a very different sort of captain. If you think of the yeah. the, the classic captains of West Ham, you mentioned Lomas and Julian Dix and Paolo Di Canio and Scott Parker when he captained us, which yeah. he, he didn't for as long as people think. So everyone always assumed he was captain, didn't they? Even though it was yeah, Matthew Upson. Yeah. But Mark Noble, Mark Noble, uh, Mark, Mark Noble uh, mm -hmm. Nolan. You know, these oh, are Lucas yeah. Neal. Lucas Neal. We always forget yeah. about Lucas Neal. But these were players who were, did have big personalities, who, who did shout and scream on the pitch and all the rest of it and shake and pump their fists. And so Potts was real kind of one of a kind. Mm. You know, may, maybe Bobby Moore's the only other captain I can think of who would have that same thing. So I, I don't know. I mean, you know, he wouldn't be in my top three captains or like Alvin. You know, oh. in my, if I think of the top three captains mm. in my lifetime, I'd think of like probably Alvin, Julian, and um, Paolo. Um, mm. So Potts, I, I love him as a player. And I just thought he was a brilliant, beautiful, classy defender. Very, very ahead of his time. Like I say, very Italian in his style. As a captain, he doesn't stand out so much in my head. But I don't know what the players who played under him would say. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think they're, they're the ones who really can yeah. answer. Although you've got yeah. to say, um, that was a fantastic team, 93 through to 96 in the Premier League, Premier mm. Bonds and Redknapp. These were good sides scoring plenty of goals so um, and conceding a lot as well. <laughs> he also would have changed his centre-back partner many times, wouldn't yes. he? Which yeah. wouldn't have been easy. So mm. whereas Alvin and Tony Gale had that great partnership and we've mm. seen other great partnerships, Steve Potts must have played alongside, well, he probably played alongside Alvin and Tony Gale and... Colin Foster would have been one for a long time. It, it, you know, all of these lads were changing all the time, weren't they? Mm, and he was still yeah. there. And he played seven of those ten games in Europe, and he was part of the Intertoto winning side as well. Ah, great With days. One thing yeah, I forgot yeah. to mention that he, the, the one trophy, our, our European trophy since um, 1965. That we yeah, won. exactly. Well, that was a great few days away in Mets. What I can remember of them, <laughs> <laughs> and we had um, we had we had Trevor. We've obviously interviewed a few of them a lot, and like Razor and Trevor and stuff. And uh, there's a great story um, that Trevor says about that European tour um, when they were in Croatia, and uh, this was uh, Igor Stimac and Devil Suker were playing for us at the time, weren't they? And um, and basically they decided to do a team bonding session. 
in Croatia. And they said, oh, we know, we know, we can sort some guys out. We'll do a bit like shooting, shooting range thing. And they're like, yeah, sounds a bit of all right. And um, basically they get driven to like a forest and this black van turns up, opens up the back and these like blokes, probably in masks, I think Trevor said, just handing out Uzis. Um, <laughs> this was the mat. This is the, this is the morning of the match. And they're just shooting Uzis in the middle of this forest. And then Mr. Monker took it upon himself to uh, strip down to his pants and started um, hopping around the forest like I'm, saying, I'm a bunny. You know, shoot me, I'm a bunny. <laughs> Turns around and all the guys who were there, the sort of the experts, the shooting gallery, were, went white because it was obviously Croatia, mid nineties. Yeah, you know, it was. It was. A, it was. It was. A, and uh, that hadn't been cleared for landmines. Vol- that, that, that volatile, volatile yes. atmosphere. So, <laughs> so he wants to try and bunny players, hop back. <laughs> but yeah, it's quality time, man. Quality time. John Monker was the same height as Steve Potts. That was the that was the other really? point. So people were going to say he's the shortest person that ever played for West Ham. And Monker would have been a lot shorter if he'd got one of those guns uh, trodden on a mine or something. Too right, too right. Well, and and that and that concludes today's today's episode, guys. Thank you so much to to Sam, obviously, and, and Martin as well. So thank you very much, everybody. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you, guys. Um, just a slight reminder again, guys. Um, I'll, I'll I'll let you both go, so because I'm just going to finish off. But thank you very much, guys. Much Thanks. love. Appreciate you both. Thank you. Um, just a slight reminder um, that um, obviously Fulham game tomorrow on Saturday is a pay-per-view game. If you do not spend 15 dollars please consider the donate to um, justgiving.com slash crown funding slash Irons Point Food Banks and support the food banks because they desperately need it in this um, terrible time we're in at the moment. Um, and uh, hope you enjoyed today's first episode. We'll be back with another episode as these things tend to happen you do one episode you get another episode. and next time it is um we're going to be concentrating on john hartson mr john hartson and so we'll also have a little video package from martin again and martin will be giving us a this is your life um portrayal of john hartson's career um and I think there's probably only one way to really finish off today and that's to replay the goal um, I've got it clipped in. We don't have to watch the whole thing. Now, here's Potts again. Tries from distance, has got a deflection. And the keeper couldn't keep it out. And Steve Potts finally has a goal for West Ham. It's his 88th game and he scored. Well, what a man. What a man. We'll probably show a few more goals for the John Hartson one, I'll be honest. Um, but until next time, I'll bring him in for one more time. From me and Martin, uh, take care, everyone. Stay safe. Wash those hands. Um, see you next time for John Hartson. And there's probably only one thing left to say. That's come on, you irons, and we'll see you again right. very, very soon. Come on, let's, let's beat the cottages on Saturday. Come on, you irons. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.